Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dream Team Tonic Podcast, episode 92. Getting close to that 100 mark now. Um, I'm Tony, and with me as usual is Ben. Are you there, Ben? How are you doing, mate? You all right? All good, mate. And James, are you there? Just about, Tony. You you snuck on. I thought we were going to uh, lose you again. Heavy night, mate. Well, <laughs> you could say that. Yeah, I probably <laughs> drank... Uh, Drink a litre of vodka. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not good for the uh, for the morning, is it? It's not, mate. No, and the, yeah, the li- not great for the, the for the old liver. Did you even see the morning? <laughs> <laughs> Apart from when you were going in. <laughs> anyway, lots to get through tonight, so we, we will. Uh, Fire on. Um, if you haven't already, um, get yourselves across to patreon.com forward slash dream team tonic and get yourselves involved. Uh, show the lads a little bit of support for, for what we do. We get, you, get yourselves access, early access to the podcast, uh, access to all our articles that we write for the hub and for ourselves, and access to the Discord forum where there's a lot of great managers giving each other good advice, some good banter, a nice friendly feel. Um, Bit of a family now, um, yeah. Uh, onwards we go, James. You're up first, mate. How's your team going this week? <clears throat> uh, p- pretty, pretty good again. I would say I'm fairly happy. Um, 44 points um, from what three players? Um, so um, I brought some <clears throat> with. I had a couple of transfers left at the. Um, on Thursday. So I brought in Mares for Saka um, due to fixture volume and, and a healthy price swing. Um, and I'm, that's worked out quite well because Mares got 18 points today. He could have got more if he hadn't given the penalty to uh, or let, let Alvarez take it. Um, he could have had a hat trick, but there you go. I'll take 18 points from Mares. That's um, quite happy with that transfer. And, um, I also did Salah to Kane because um, obviously Spurs had a few more fixtures. Um, I w- so, so and I, well, Kane got got me thirteen, um, and um, the, the, I got a couple of minus points for, in my defence from Trippier and Botman. But um, apart from that, yeah, fairly happy. Forty four points, still doing pretty well this this year so far. Yeah, not bad, mate. It's it's. Three, three decent weekends in a row, that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, good start. You didn't good mention start. Rashford. I didn't, did I? No. <laughs> That's because I'm still pissed, pissed I think, Ben. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, Rashford got me 15 points as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did all right, didn't he? Um, yeah. Good effort from Rashford. Let's say... Um, Couple of players there that didn't play. Were you tempted by the City lads today? Uh, another mid, an extra midfielder, or bringing in one of the defenders? Poss, I did. I did briefly consider it, but um, I was otherwise engaged today, so. <laughs> 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 I to do it. Um, yeah, perhaps I could have moved Odegaard to a City mid, um, because they've got loads of fixtures coming up. But um, no, I um, I still might make that move uh, at the end of the week. So City's still got loads of potential fixtures this month. I, I need to take a look at the permutations of, you know, we've, we've obviously we've had the cup draw. Yeah. That probably means we're going to get some rearranged fixtures announced and things, unless they already have been. There um, has been one today, yeah. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, uh, the one advantage of hold, holding so far, so I've still got all five left, is of course, is I can take a look at uh, that full fixture schedule when it's announced. Hopefully, it, we'll have a, a really clear picture by th- sort of Thursday and I can make some moves then. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like you said, the, the lads you've had in, Rashford, Mares, Kane, they've done the business, haven't they? So, yeah. Yep. Without using any transfers, put you in that mm. position. Right, over to my side. Um, with the last transfer of the last set of transfers, I brought in Grealish for Saka in prep for this week. And then 
Grealish doesn't turn up in the squad, it's a little bit frustrating because I had the cash to go. Um, I'm sure I had, no, I didn't have the cash to go direct to Foden actually. Um, but obviously the Salah to Kane move um, meant, meant that I could then go Grealish to Foden today. Um, so the game goal zero points. Wan Bissaka did not play. Burn did not play. Trippier came on for a minus one. Um, midfield De Bruyne did not play. Fernandez minus one. Um, I, there was a little bit of confusion about which game he was suspended for. Um, is it the midweek cup game in the Carabao yeah. Cup? He's suspended. Right. Yeah, suspended um, for that game. Yeah. Apologies to the chap on the YouTube that. Uh, I thought he was suspended for this game and he were, he were all right for the Carabao. But I did drop him a message before the, the game kicked off, so uh, when I realised. Uh, Almiron, zero points. Um, he came on late on beneath for Newcastle, trying to trying to muster some up, a, a fight back against Chef Wednesday. Um, incoming Foden, got himself 10 points. A good performance from Foden today. Um, I think he fancied that penalty as well that he won, didn't he? But Mares took the ball off him. He weren't as nice to a Foden as he was to Alvarez to give him that penalty. Um, Kane, 13 points, did the business. Uh, got five more than what Salah managed. So, so far, um, it's a decent move. Although now Liverpool have the rearranged fixture with a replay. Uh, not rearranged, yeah. for the replay. So, it does give Liverpool that extra fixture, which kind of balances it out now with Spurs, doesn't it? Um so, yeah, so we'll uh, keep an eye on Salah now. Haaland did not play. And uh, Martial is such a bugger that I couldn't afford Rashford because he was doing so much better this team the last two weeks. But, yeah, Martial, a big fat zero. I'm hoping I'm hoping he can get a few against Charlton and and uh, dampen that blow. So, only, um, only, I think it was 21 points for the week. Yeah, 21. Um, so, not great. Um, it's in 21k this team um, it's alright it's on 1077 points best team though has uh, is, is reignited since the break which is good it's back up to 52nd oh go on Tony climbing again so decent that's I'll good say, good mate yeah I, I see some someone saying Aman's up to um, 20th or something like that yeah about 23rd I think Aman is um, yeah yeah, smashing it, smashing it. Keep it up, Aman. Um, yeah, they're a big drop. I dropped a small like 600, 600 summit before the break, so it's good to be able to climb back up there and hopefully could keep on climbing. We thought the old uh, change of, change the name of the team had had uh, put the uh, put the spoilers on the team. He changed it to Dream Team Tonic Podcast, <laughs> and it just fall like a stone. As we, uh, as I think you two <laughs> realized the last couple of seasons, but yeah, back up there now. So let's see how it goes. Over to you, Ben. Yep. So I have forty-five points this week. Um, I did a couple of transfer. Sorry, I did my last transfer on Thursday night. Um, I took Kane, got Kane, and put him in for Salah to get the yeah. price rise. And uh, Kane had the extra game over Liverpool. So, yeah, Liverpool ended up getting a replay. So now that's a four for three. But if Liverpool win that, then it's it's a four for four. So they both have the same amount of fixtures then by the end of the month. Yeah. Um, and then today I brought in Mares with a heavy heart because... I've loved having Odegaard on my team, but obviously when there's opportunities with fixture with fixture count, um, Maris possibly has a four for one over Odegaard now because he's Odegaard's rumored to be rested for the FA Cup game. Yeah. So that that's why I, that's why I did it, um, and he re- rewarded me with eighteen points. So happy days. That's um, three three games you got free now, isn't it? Really. Yeah, well, if Odegaard doesn't two. play, if yeah. if he does play, it's a four for two, but still worth it, I think. Yeah, uh, I'll hopefully get Odegaard back in in February, some point. Yeah, 
Um, this team has now gone since the break from 275k to 140k now, so creeping up now. Happy, Happy with that. Um, I've got Rashford up front for 15 points, Harry Kane 13, Haaland rested tonight, so nil poor. But I would imagine he'll be uh, well up for Southampton on mm-hmm. in the Carabao Cup quarter final. Definitely. Um, I, I'm much happier that he's playing that game. Because if, 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 <laughs> if anybody has took the punt and took Haaland out and put Alvarez in or, you, you know, a, a move, think, something uh, like that. I think Oz did in the um, in Discord. I think he, he said he did it. Yeah. I, I think it could be an absolute bloodbath, Haaland at Southampton. I know. It could be. Alvarez might play as well, though, so we don't know. But I, I wouldn't have done it. But if you're chasing, yeah, 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 oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm not not saying it's the wrong move. Alvarez could have had himself a few tonight. I like to see he might still play the next game. He might just move him out wide. Um, Got to get Harlan back in though as soon as possible. I think. Yeah, (laughs) that's the trouble. Is that if you then touch that money elsewhere, is that expensive? You start to you will start to struggle to get him back. It's a long month as well this month. Yeah. Um, De Bruyne rested as well as well. Um, Almiron uh, came off the bench for against Sheffield Wednesday. Nothing. Uh, they're out of the FA Cup now. Uh, Joe Linton played but didn't do anything either. So Neil Poir, Mares eighteen, Maguire come off the bench but they conceded uh, against Everton. So Neil Poir and. Trippier minus one off the bench, um, yeah. and Shaw didn't play. I was a share. I was looking to uh, bring in a City defender, but I have just thought Newcastle lost. Been I've been solid when they play the first eleven, and they're playing Leicester in the uh, Carabao Cup. So if they win that, then they get an extra two games before the end yeah. of January. So I thought it's worth waiting just to see that the draw, how the cups go in that. Um, I was Definitely. I was toying with bringing in the kanji, and then I was thinking, shall I bring Lewis in? Because um, he might come off the bench for a five pointer, and then he might play in the cup. He seems to be making appearances, and it'll enable me some cash for possibly getting Salah back at, uh, eventually. Yeah, uh, and then I've got De Gea in goal, who didn't score didn't score any points. So yeah, forty five points. Best team is now up to 2k, so I'm getting up there now. Hey, you're up there, mate. Yeah, starting to get up there. 60 points this week in my best team. Um, over the week, it was eight over the week so far, it's 817th. So it's one of my, my best scoring teams. Excellent. I did put Lewis in that team, <laughs> sneak, sneak to a cheeky five pointer at the end. Yeah, he did. Um, I put him in my second team. Uh, him, him and Aki, obviously Aki didn't get a shout. I'm hoping Aki will probably play a part midweek against Southampton. I, I expect another clean sheet um, for City there. Surely, yeah. Uh, I think Aki's in the, in the first team now. I think that that was a bit of a B team tonight, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Interesting. Well, the ports um. I was just going to say, Laporte's just coming back, just come back from a back injury, hasn't he? So yeah. he might, he might be. I wouldn't be surprised if he what if he turned into you know yeah. the favoured one of the favoured centre halves because he he has been pretty good over the last few seasons. Um, mm. But we'll have to keep an eye on that one. It was just, Aki's it was been just... playing left back, hasn't he? So yeah, yeah. that's true. Stokes and Kanji are the main ones at the moment. Yeah. But... Laporte will get his team. Surely Laporte will get back in the first eleven eventually. Yeah, just, you'd think just so. Spoil. They just spoiled for choice there. I mean, yeah. So, so when we Pep, Pep was speaking about Ake the other day, he was saying about he's he's, he's the best uh, best player we've got at defending from eighteen yards. He's, he's he's the best this best that he's and he was just singing his praises completely. And obviously he's had a lot more game time recently. Obviously Gomez came in today and Gomez looked brilliant, really good mm. attacking. He had a he had a great game today. Um, like you say, Kanji, Lapore, Stones, Ake, Gomez, Cancelo, Walker, Rico Lewis, and then that's without Diaz. Yeah, it's 
it's pretty scary. And, it, and it's why I, I think we're a little bit tentative to even touch them. I, I don't mind, like, the Lewis one. And I made the, I made the move in the second team because, um, yeah, I just wanted my second side to probably jump on City a little bit earlier on the defence side rather than mm. just the attack. The, that Rico Lewis looks the real deal. I think he's got the trust of Pep now by the, by the looks of it after putting in a few big performances. And I think he's he's going to get minutes more or less every game. Mm. I think he's just going to keep blooding him, keep blooding him. Um, he's, yeah. he's the session young we wanted. <laughs> yeah, he is, he is. And they put him in at a nice price. He already obviously went straight up, didn't he? 0.2 to 2.7. But even at yeah. that, he's still a snip. Um, and I like the way... I like the way when he when he is playing, he he still seems to be, like he has that role where he's cutting into midfield and making things mm. happen as well. So I think down the line there might be some attacking returns from him as well. Um, although Walker had a cracking game today, he looked really good. Walker, uh, yeah, it's not it's just not safe for you. City defence, but it all clicked today. Yeah, they had, they had a weak inside out to be fair. Chelsea they lost Sterling, Pulisic in the last game. And they went a little bit light at the back, but very, very good performance from City. Um, I think it's got everyone's, uh, everyone's, everyone's uh, thinking of what they need to do really going forward. Right, listener questions. Here we go. Um, some didn't make the deadline, uh, and and just a big apology to uh, Andy Barnett who last week. <laughs> He drops his questioning, and I couldn't understand it, so I uh, I skipped past it. Uh, so again, Andy, apologies, mate. Uh, you will be on the pod in the next couple of weeks, um, as well as we do have someone who um, who's not been on the pod before, Stephen Holt, um, who is going to make an appearance in the next few weeks as well. So yeah, um, keep an eye on that. Right, Ryan Driver uh, in the Discord. If you have a budget around the 55 to 56 million mark and can't afford strength all around the team, besides KDB and Haaland, who are the must-haves where would you and where would you prioritise your budget? Attack or defence? You can't afford to get the likes of Kane, Salah and Trippier, etc. all in at the same time. Um, ben? Who would you yeah. prioritise, mate? Well, first of all... Uh... I'd wait and see who goes through in the Cups and the Carabao Cup as well. Um, I think you can prioritise money and attack now. Um, in defence, there are lots of cheaper options at the moment. Um, Trippier, I think you should have had him from the from the uh, unlimited transfers for the begin from when we started in December. That's when you should have had him. Um, he's not a priority now, I don't think, with Newcastle going out the FA Cup and not being in Europe for February. Um, if Newcastle lose against Leicester in the Carabao Cup, they'll only have two games left this month. But if they win, I, I think they're favourites to win. So Newcastle could have four games still. Yeah. So he's still a good option. But I think uh, you should prioritise your attack at the minute. Uh there's a lot of like thirteen pointers, fifteen pointers you could get here, and there eighteen pointers. Yeah. If you get the right ones in, um, so uh, yeah, definitely. If you out of those three, Kane, Salah, Trippier, um, I don't think Trippier's a a must have at the minute now. Uh, if you've got him in your team, brilliant. But it, I wouldn't be bringing him in now. Um, so. Kane Salah's gonna probably have the same amount of games if uh, if Liverpool beat Wolves in the replay, so that'll be four games for the rest of the month. Um, obviously, Haaland, Rashford, Man United just got an extra game rearranged against Palace. Uh, I think it's the week after. Yeah. Uh, so next week next midweek they've got a game after the man city game in between man city and arsenal on the weekends so that's a rearranged game so i think rashford's looking like he's a, a keep at the minute now yeah uh, and obviously harland don't even have to talk about him just have him yeah. on the team yeah it's dangerous not to yeah 
Yeah, James. I think I think Ben's nailed it there. To be honest, um, I I would definitely be prioritising the my funds in attack. Um, I agree with that. Um, there's plenty of options. There's there's quite a few cheap defender options as well. But um, yeah, I think Ben nailed that one. Yeah, I've, I think he's completely right. Um, you've got to play fixtures. Um, and even if you've only got 56 million, you can make that work. I know obviously you can't have Kane, Salah, Trippier all at the same time. But if you look at this month or the next month and you take it into consideration, so Kane, Salah, Trippier, at this moment in time, out of the three, you probably take Kane and Trippier because of fixtures. Obviously, before Salah got that um, replay, but and then next month you'd be looking well. I'll downgrade Trippier to say I don't know Rico Lewis, and I'll use that budget to be able to get Salah in and Kane alongside Haaland. Obviously, it, depending on what what Rashford's doing at that time and all that other stuff. But there's mm. always options, and if you play the fixtures, there's usually some some uh, some players at a, a cheap mark that will allow you to go bigger in attack as well and get the players in you can you just got to find that little that little budget option um so yeah always attack the, the fixture fixture quantity fix, fixture quality newcastle don't have european games so trippier re- really you don't want to have in nearly six million in defense for a, for a guy who's going to be playing one game a week if i tell you what if newcastle lose midweek to um leicester there's an absolute exodus from Newcastle's um, Newcastle's players because not only will they have lost their FA Cup potential game, they'll have lost the two Carabao Cup potential games. Like you said, like Ben said, they'll have two games left at rest of the month. And then all of a sudden, City players are how many games are they having extra over Newcastle for the rest of the month? It's it's mega, it's massive. So yeah, just keep an eye on that, Ryan. Um, and obviously to try and make your budget work in that in that way. New, Newcastle do have a potential rearranged game they could fit in, uh, but it's against West Ham and they went through in the FA Cup, so uh, it's fitting so it in. that puts the scupper on that then? Maybe, maybe, but they might be able to fit it in midweek if there's no Carabao Cup semi-final right. for Newcastle. That's the only thing. Um, yeah, yeah, it's got to keep an eye on them, Hey. You gotta keep your eye on them, aren't you? Like you say with yeah, these exactly. rearranged games. Um, yeah. Because I think United had two re- to rearrange, don't they, as well? So um, we've got the, the Crystal Palace one that snuck in between the City and Arsenal game, is it? Yeah. And then and I think we've got one more. Leeds. Yeah, Leeds. Yes. Yeah, you just gotta keep keep your eye on that. Um that's why you do a, a fixture easy, isn't it, Ben? Exactly, mate. Help all these patrons <laughs> out. Um Right, Lee Hooper. Um, I'll ask the first one. Um, bit simple. Going forward, Salah or Kane? James. It's a tricky one, that. I, am, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, before Liverpool had their cup, the extra cup fixture, uh, the rear, you know, they've got a replay to do. I'm, I would have said, would have said Kane, but uh, um, I, I would say switch between them depending on. But depending on fixtures, you, you've just got to keep an eye on it. I don't think I can... They're both good options. Um, Kane's, Kane's in a bit of form at the moment. Um, uh, so, yeah, I would just keep an eye on those fixtures and, and switch... I think you can you can afford to switch them around depending on who's got the best fixtures. Yep. Ben? Um, right, so Liverpool now have a double game week next week. So... Um, Liverpool have a better game week than Tottenham. So Liverpool have Brighton and Wolves and Tottenham have Arsenal Man City. But the week after that and the week after that, uh, Tottenham have better fixtures with Fulham and Preston and Liverpool have Chelsea and a possible Brighton in the fourth round if they win their replay. So I would say, because obviously... It's quite a long month. There's quite a few uh, weeks still. It's like three game weeks to go. I would say whoever you've got, just stick with them for this game week. Uh, the, the new f- refresh of the game week. So when Liverpool play Brighton and Tottenham play Arsenal, I just say stick with the one you've got. See who goes through in the the replay out of Liverpool and uh, Tottenham. If if you're on Salah, for example, 
you can move to Kane then for the Fulham game and the Preston game. Yeah. But um, if you're uh, Kane, I'd probably just stick on Kane anyway and use your fixtures to sort the rest of your team out for the the fixtures coming up and you could jump onto some of them Man City players for the uh, fixture pile-up. Yeah. I, I think the, the the tricky bit between both of them, if one of them teams was on form, mm. I think you'd be you'd be saying one yeah. or the other. I think because, to be fair, I, I know Spurs battered Palace four 0 the, the other day uh, when we were recording the podcast uh, last week with Fergie and they had a great second half performance. But I mean, Spurs have been shot for a while, and then they turned up at Portsmouth. You'd expect them. I know it's a cup game and stuff, but they went strong, um, especially up top. And you, you just expect a little bit more from them. But again, apparently, really shy first half performance. And and then Liverpool, well, I mean, yeah, but it's, it's a little bit of the same. Struggling for confidence, struggling to just get anything going. And I think both, obviously, Kane and Sally, it's like you can't, you can't um, rely on one or the other at the minute because the teams aren't doing so well. So once that changes, once someone hits a bit of form, I think it's an easy decision if the other one's not in form. But yeah, attack the fixtures. Um, I think Ben covered the fixtures pretty well there. So yeah. The second part of um, Lee Bruce's question, I, I think he pretty much answers it himself. Um, so a lot of talk of moving on to City now which makes sense fixed evolving this is often the point uh, that start to click into top gear but should we be hesitant because of some tricky fixtures coming up and the defence not being strong this season with regards to lumping in on midfielders I've done some research on the mids and Foden who is out of favour has 8 goals at 166 minutes per goal Mares 6 goals at 198 minutes per goal um, they're the most explosive but the rest have extremely poor records this season. De Bruyne has only got three goals. Uh, Bernardo's only got two. And Gundogan, Gundogan's only got two. And Grealish with a solitary one goal. Um, perhaps this points to Haaland taking all the goals, leaving slim pickings for the rest. Well, when Haaland's not on the pitch, they've done all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, tonight, Mares grabbing two. Um Fallen and grabbing himself one, Alvarez grabbing one. It, it does possibly because obviously Howland has ate up a lot of the goals. Um, but the assists, the ratings, the amount of goals City score, they're, they are notorious for being one of the biggest scorers in the league, if not the biggest. Um, I think. City, are, I think, yeah, they could have tricky fixtures, but I, you'd say Chelsea away or Chelsea at home is a tricky fixture. Would you expect them to get back to back clean sheets? Uh, they're pretty much fixture proof. So they they could they could slap anybody three or four nil. We've seen it before. Um, yeah, it's it's one of them. I think City every is possibly the way, um, especially with a fixture count. One of them, it might pay off. You could have a, you could have Mares, De Bruyne, Foden, even throw Gundo or Bernardo in there as well if you wanted to, and just go all out City midfield. Still not sold on the defense, obviously because of the rotation. And like I said, there is some tricky fixtures. So throw that in with the rotation, it does give you a bit of doubt. But if there's anybody that could keep a a good number of clean sheets in a row against any opposition, it is City. So yeah, that's my cover of that. What do you reckon, James? Um, yeah, nothing to add on that one, really. I think I think you covered it. And Ben, I have to say, excellent research, Lee. Yeah, looking into that. that. Um, I think James uh, was talking about this uh, on the last pod um, about um, Harlan taking all the goals off the midfielders, and uh, when he's not on the pitch, like you just said, it seems to go back to how it was last season. So yeah, Mares loves this time of the year. It seems, yeah, when all the fixtures pile up, he gets a lot more minutes and gets involved with the goals. And it's good to see Foden back in the team, and he's got a goal. So 
Yeah. Uh, fixture pile up is great for Man City. Options. Yes. Lots of options. <clears throat> DT Patrick, have the FA Cup results affected your transfer plans? Ben. As I always say, when I write in my article <laughs> on the Patreon, the fixtures, uh, it's all about the extra games for the top teams and the top players. Yeah. So get get yeah. yourself joined onto our Patreon and get reading the, the uh, fixtures. Yeah, definitely. James, the affected your plans, mate. It's a bit early to say at the moment. I would say, you know, I haven't had. Um, I mean, it's we've only just had the cup draw this afternoon. I haven't had time to to fully assess it yet. There's no massive rush. I'll certainly be giving it a lot of thought before Thursday, mm. in case I want to jump on any players that might be going up or some of the other ones that I've got might be going down. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on it for sure. Yeah, I think the biggest result was the Newcastle one. And I think off the back of that, I said earlier, if they lose the Carabao Cup game against Leicester, which Leicester on the day can beat anybody, they're a good side on their day. I, <laughs> I know you can't, Ben, but they still have the quality in the side to be able to turn Newcastle over. And, and if they do, um, then that, that'll that have a massive effect, that mm. massive effect. Um, they're earmarked now, my Newcastle players, where I was thinking, actually, they're probably shooing for the rest of the month with the way they were playing, but now they're out in the FA Cup, you're thinking, well, if they go out in yeah. the Carabao Cup, yeah, it's, it's a fixture goal yeah. that needs. They definitely blank on the uh, FA Cup fourth round as well because they have... Oh, no, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at a Brighton there. That, that's wrong. They have West Ham. So, well, yeah, West Ham went through, didn't they? So they definitely yeah. blank the FA Cup fourth round. So yeah. they, they need them two extra games in the Carabao Cup to uh, be more attractive. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if Leicester win, just to shake it up a bit, I think. And, I mean, the rest of the FA Cup fixtures, as long as the team's got through, you, you, you're pretty much just, they've got an extra fixture, happy days, and and hopefully your, your players make it. Um, obviously, City have drawn Arsenal or Oxford, haven't they? Yeah. Which yeah, is a bit tricky, like, but again, it's City, it doesn't matter. It might be Oxford, who knows? <laughs> Look at Steve you know, tonight. Yeah, you never know. You never know Oxford at home to Arsenal. If Arsenal do rest a few too many, you never know. It could be an upset on the cards there. Um, that would be quite an upset, upset, I think. But uh, yeah, could happen. Could happen. It would be. We all have a good upset in the cup. Um, it's well, nice to see sometimes. A couple of the lads were talking about piling into Villa in the Discord, weren't they? And we, I kept yeah. going, no, don't do it. Yeah. Don't do yeah. it. Pick the yeah, best well, players from the best teams. Don't pick pl- pl- the best players from the poor teams. Yeah, it's true. They, like I say, none of them had averaged over three points a game. I think we said about Villa. Mm. Yes. Screw. What, what about uh, Maguire? Maybe uh, signing for Villa, I've heard tonight. Mm. As first, I've, I heard it earlier, but like in the Discord, but I haven't seen it online or anything. Yeah, there's pictures yeah, circulating of him in a, in a, in a restaurant. Uh, nearby Villa's training complex or something, meeting up with somebody. Uh, that's definitely an interesting one, one to keep an eye on. Mm-hmm. Right. I'll go on, James. No, I was just going to say, I did, in a, in the Discord, I did set up a, um, when I saw people looking at Aston Villa players and things like <laughs> that, I, I I set up a new channel called um, My Punt Sub Story. Sub, sub, sub story, sorry. <laughs> Um, but no, no, no one's. Um, and I did say we'd read read out the funny ones, but no, no one's um, held, held their hands up yet and said uh, uh, admitted to um, bringing in uh, <laughs> any Villa players or or any other. I think uh, I've seen a, a not few yet. Coutinho's. I think I've seen a few <laughs> Coutinho's in there, didn't I? <laughs> a few Coutinho's. Did you read Stephen Edge's tweet about um, the substitution were taking taking a little bit longer for Coutinho because they had to remove him from one of their players' pockets? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. brilliant. But yeah, um, just touching on the um, the uh, pump sub story, uh, you can 
getting the Discord and, and filling your sub stories for the week. Uh, and we will get a we will get a mention along with this nice tune in the background and we will discuss just how horribly wrong it went for you. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Right, back to the giving hand. <laughs> right. Um David eighty seven's been on. Money no object. What's your back five looking for for Jan to Feb? I I didn't I didn't um write up any players as such. Uh, but I, I like the look of the United block from twenty fourth of January onwards. Um if you have a look at that. Nice nice set of fixtures for United, a nice block of fixtures to go forward with them. Um and obviously doing pretty well now on the Ten Hag. He, he seems to have got a a bit of a, a bit of team spirit going on there and a bit more of a solidity about United. Um Newcastle obviously could have so much less games that their blocks might be coming to an end, might see the end of theirs. And Chelsea were awful tonight, um, awful today. Um, so, but just a note that if they do show improvement, if there is a, a glimmer of hope in their back line with, um, and they do start to go on a little bit of a run, they've got some very good fixtures from February, um, a lovely like batch. And I am no way saying a Chelsea train again because I. <laughs> but if they do show a little bit of summer, it, it might be summer for somebody who's chasing uh, maybe a couple of Chelsea defenders in there because they do have a nice set of fixtures. But yeah, other than that, that, that that's how I'm that's how I'm answering your question, David. Because I don't really want to go and start singling players out because I, I think mm-hmm. you more look at blocks of players um, going forward. Do you reckon, James? Well, it, David, did, David did say um, money, no objects. So um, I, I, it's it's not like previous seasons, is it? Where you've, you know, where we we, we would have a few, we'd, we'd have Reece, we'd be trying to squeeze in Reese James and yeah. uh, Trent. Um, yeah, so but it's a bit different this year because I'm I'm going to read out some players that are, that are in my money, no object that aren't really that expensive. So I, well, apart from Edison, of course. Yeah. Um, if money was no object, you probably would go Edison, wouldn't you? And go. Yeah. Um, Trippier, obviously, but not as favourable now with less fixtures. But I just he's he's so good. Yeah. And he's, I'm, I'd be reluctant to take take out Trippier. Yeah, I did don't, play don't around wrong, James. Like if, if if Newcastle beat Leicester, mm. like then Newcastle defenders are a hold again because all of a sudden, yeah. all right, they've lost one fixture, but. You could deal with that. That's st- yeah. it's all right. They still got the double further on with the uh, Carabao yeah. Cup semi-finals. It's it's just if they lose this midweek, mm-hmm. got to watch that. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, sorry. I did, I did have Shah in there, but I've I changed it. Um, so I've gone. So Edison Trippier Kanji because he seems to be the most yeah. favoured centre back at the moment, at least. Uh, Stones and Dallo. Yeah. Dallo's not expensive, but um, I think. Oh, as we saw earlier in the season, he's he's got attacking output. Yeah. United's defense looks good. Um, why not go? I I would have him in there in he's my pre- back five. He's pretty much a trippier, like uh, for United, isn't he? He's, he's good on the ratings, really good. Yeah, uh, to get a clean sheet, he's 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 pretty up there on the ratings. He's probably going to get star man. Uh, I don't know what he's got so far this season, but he, he must be up there. What do you reckon, Ben? Yeah, um, well, obviously I'm looking at it because we still don't know what's going to happen with the Carabao Cup fixtures. Um, but uh, it's very tight between the goalkeepers for me. Edison, De Gea and Pope are still the, the very close at the minute until we know what happens in the Carabao Cup. So I can't I can't pick one at the minute. Uh, Edison's not been playing in the Cups, in the domestic Cups, so... But he still has four. I think he has three league games, and yeah, then, yeah three league games, and uh, there's a possible of another three cup games. Sorry, yeah, three cup games this month with the two Carabao Cup semi finals and the FA Cup fourth round. But they probably won't play in them ones. Uh, De Gea probably will now with them. Uh, Dubravka went back to Newcastle, didn't he? Yeah. So. 
he might play the uh, cup get domestic cup games. He did play in the previous ones, but for some reason Dubravka played in the last one. Uh, and Pope plays in every game, so Pope's great, star man magnet. But uh, I think depending on if they go through to the same finals, that's uh, another thing. Yeah. Again, Trippier's my favourite defender at the moment, but same situation as Pope. Um, I think I wouldn't mind even keeping him a bit longer just because of his star man potential and his seven rating potential assists, plus of odd goal. And then you've got your yeah, Dallo, who's a bit of a, a seven rating magnet, can get the yeah. odd star man. Uh, United's got loads of fixtures now. Um, and then it's like it's a toss up between the Man City players, really. Um, looks like at the minute Akanji is the best one, and then you've obviously said no budget, so you could probably go for Stones then. Um, if you're on a budget, our case, even Lewis, if you're struggling for budget, Lewis get the odd five points, even if you don't start, he seems to be making an appearance, so yeah. yeah um, that's what I'd be looking at at the moment. But it's all up in the air until the Carabao Cup's over, as the quarterfinals are over. Yeah, the, the big games, these ones, because obviously they're give giving teams an extra two games mm. in this in this calendar month. So I, I know the FA Cup obviously alters our thinking as we go, but the Carabao Cup one's a big one. Big one. Two games extra, that. DT Patrick's. Back again, like a boomerang. What would you say, fellas, are the key ingredients to being a top dream team manager? James? I would say dedication and research, a combination of eye tests and stats. Um, but probably more, anyone can do that really, but probably more important it would be bravery to jump off the template at the right time and knowing when to do that. Because it's easy to pick all the top players, um, but knowing when to when to make that move off of you know like like at the moment it's it's so easy. Oh, I don't want to get rid of Odegaard. He's been so mm-hmm. good. But if you actually if you're brave enough to do it, he hasn't got as many fixtures. That's just one example. That's an obvious one. But that there are you know the best managers know when the right time to move on from a player. I think is is a key ingredient. Yeah, Ben. Yeah, excellently, excellently answered. Um, I just want to add, uh, I think uh, good managers are very patient. Um, you've got to study the fixtures, like we've been talking about, the fixture count. Um, don't get to, too high when, you, when you're doing really well. Don't go over the top. and Don't get too low when something goes wrong. It's uh, A lot of people are in the same boat as you, so... You just gotta roll with roll with the di- roll with the dice, basically. Um, that's it, really. What do you think, Tony? Yeah, everything you you two have just said, and I just add in a little bit of um, probably one thing I learned from last season, uh, and probably the last few seasons to be fair, is sometimes you can be stubborn. Um, mm. When something looks good, you think it might end, or uh, last year. The Liverpool block were doing that well, um, and I didn't jump on it. And I, I think my season could have been so much better if I had a jump on it, even halfway through it. I'm going, well, I'll just ride this wave for now, and then get off it when when is necessary. Um, and that's what I've put into place this season for myself is to say, if some is continue to be good, don't. Don't shy away because usually, like you say about the bravery about jumping away from something, mm. uh, sometimes you were too stubborn to get involved in it, thinking, "Well, I'm not going to go anywhere." But sometimes you've got to ride the wave for a little bit. Mm. So yeah, so the Newcastle block was a good example of the season. It started very well. Um, the values rose quite quickly, and it's so easy to say, "Well, it's Newcastle." I don't think it's going to continue, but they had the fixtures, they had the form. Usually, I wouldn't jump on it. But then on the on the change up on the on the um, wild card, I went for it, and obviously they they got three three back to back clean sheets, didn't they? After the uh, restart, and I think it was four actually. Wait, four, yeah. four, in yeah. The end. I mean, and 
no, I wouldn't be back up to 52nd if he hadn't have done mm. that. Yeah. Whereas if that were last season, I probably wouldn't have done it. I'd have gone against the grain again. Um, so sometimes I can be a little bit, yeah, a little bit stubborn, I'd say. I think other than that, yeah, you've covered it great. You've got, you've just got to, them fixtures, fixture counts, uh, form, and put them all together and, and make a very, very good um, good judgment. Um, there's a lot of players that they don't, they don't know that players um, have only two fixtures compared to somebody's six. Or and, and when you pick them up, when you pick them extra four games up, um, it makes a massive difference, especially across the course of the season. So, yeah, could be engaged, switched on. Right, Mgu is on. Arsenal defenders back on the table for February and March. Okay, we're getting ahead now. Uh, the fixtures look really good. Um, after the after that question, managed to extend my lead to sixty points in the mini league. Too early to start blocking moves. What would you consider a healthy point buffer? So yeah, Arsenal fixtures look very nice in February March. Um, it's definitely going to be Arsenal blocks back on the table. I'm pretty sure. Um, obviously, the European draws come into play throughout that time as well. But I don't think that. I'd, that I put you off, uh, especially with how the league fixtures look. So, what do you reckon, James? Yeah, it's, um, I think it's a bit too early for blocking moves. Um, I mean, the one the one thing I would say, and I've said many times before, is um, if your rival's got a player you really fear, mm. um, I, I've got there's no reason not to bring him in. Um, that's not necessarily blocking. That if you're fearing this guy, you know he's a good player. So. Um, there's no reason not to do that, but but to go for block move for move to to try and match your rival, it's too early for that. I would say anything over a hundred points is a healthy buffer. What do you think, guys? Ben, yeah, totally agree. Um, I I won't be looking at Arsenal until probably February the fourth, uh, Everton, and then they've if they get through the FA Cup, they've got the Sorry, that, that if they uh, get through that FA Cup game, but it's Man City, uh, then the FA Cup fifth rounds in February the twenty eighth. So, yeah, um, but like I said, they got a double game week in um, against Brentford and Man City as well after that Everton game. So, yeah, and then the European game starts. So, yeah, definitely. Um, I think you covered it pretty well. Uh, the other things, James, about the buffer. I mean, yeah. sixty points can be swallowed up pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, in no time at all, probably a week, week and a half, yeah, you could lose that. So a hundred points is a decent buffer, like James said. You don't even block in moves. If if you fear somebody in their team, um, it's probably because they've got fixtures and form going into it. So there's no harm in bringing somebody in like that. But yeah, don't be don't be moving. Um, we're moving to try and block somebody underneath you, especially not just yet. 60 points is a nice lead. Just keep keep building it. Keep doing what you're doing now and keep building that lead. Attack the fixtures, quantity, quality, form, and you, you won't go far, far wrong. Um, he's 60 points behind you for a reason. Um, Lee Hooper is back. When Europe gets up and running and with Newcastle out of the FA Cup, do you think there'll be a time to move off of Trippier with his price tag being so high? Or is it possible to, or is it impossible to move off a player who his worst rate in all season was six point seven? He's been delving into his uh his stats as Lee. He's been doing some decent studying. Um yeah. Ben, Trippier. You you were just saying earlier, like because he's such a star man magnet, it'd be hard to just move on, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh it's- Tricky to uh, move him on, especially with the the fixtures doing all right until February. But then, like you say, European games, you might need that money for uh, a premium striker. You might want like Salah, Kane, Haaland at at that point. So, yeah, at the moment, I'd I'd still keep Trippier for now. Um, Reassess after the uh, Carabao Cup quarterfinal. Yeah. Mm. Tricky one, tricky one. James? 
Yeah, it's a tricky. It, Trippy is um is such a good good option. I I think you've covered that really well. But one thing I would say is, um, looking at their um their squad, and they put out the second the second team this weekend, didn't they? And it and they, they didn't look very good. So mm-hmm. if if Newcastle get a few a few key defensive injuries or key if they start losing a few key players um that those clean sheets could, could quite easily you know fall away and even if Trippier's still playing um if they lose the likes of Shah and uh, Botman um you know that that would that would be a, a signal for me to to move off because I don't think their their backup players like the likes of Jamal Lascelles is is quite good enough um by the looks of it so um keep an eye on that one yeah, definitely. There's, they've got they've got a good eleven now, haven't they? But that squad just isn't isn't quite there yet. But we are in January, so they they do have the option to uh to be strengthening. So we we'll keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on that. Um, I just think that if your budget isn't that high, Trippier is a luxury, especially if he's making you choose between Salah and Kane rather than having Salah and Kane. So. If if that is the choice, then get rid of Trippier, downgrade, and get the, get the big big hitters up up top. Um, but other than that, if you've got the luxury and you've got the budget, why not keep him keep him tickling along in there? Right, FPL Daniel, a hat trick, a hat trick of questions here uh, on Twitter. Uh, Rico Lewis, good option for City defense. I think we know that. I think we. Uh, We've covered that. He's going to be great for coming on and sneaking five points. I think he will get a few starts as well. Um, and he could have attacking potential as well. Obviously, we've not seen too much of him, but we'll see that going forward. Very, very cheap. Um, great enabler in a bloody good City side. Um, right, Liverpool assets. Keeper sell. Currently don't own any, as they don't have a double game week this week. But... What would you do with your Liverpool assets? Namely, obviously, Salah. I don't think there's many other that are that highly owned at the moment. Um, but if you had him, James, Salah, what are you doing with him? Well, first of all, there is a double game week now because they've got the cup re- replay. Yeah, yeah they yeah. do. <laughs> um, I, I, in terms of Liverpool assets, at the moment, Salah is the only Liverpool player I would be holding at the moment. Um, the defend- I wouldn't touch the defence. There's nothing much in midfield. I'm keeping my eye on uh, on the trouble is with Nunes is that you've got so many good other good options. You're not you're not going to bring Nunes in for Rashford. I don't think at the moment. Um, no. He's in a similarish price bracket. Um, I'll be keeping my eye on Gakpo, see how he gets on. Um, but yeah, Salah's the only hold for me at the moment. I think. Yeah, Ben. Well, I, I don't have any other option. Uh... Any other Liverpool assets apart from Salah in a couple of teams now because I moved a lot of them on to Kane. But um, if I did have Liverpool assets like your Trent's, Robertson's, um, Salah, I'd keep them for this week, for the new game week with Brighton Wolves double double game week. And then I'd reassess after that because uh, they might go out of the FA Cup. But um, yeah, so hold for another game week. I don't mind that. Um Tough, tough, tough double game week with Brighton away and Wolves away, but I, I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it for one more game week. I mean, Brighton, Brighton are on fire. They are, yeah. Um, and to be fair to Wolves, they played really well the other night. Mm. I, very, very. I mean, I thought they should have gone through, but less said about those goals, the better. Uh, we don't want to get into these uh, offside debates, but. Yeah, um, it'll be a tricky game for Liverpool away at Wolves, obviously. Um, Wolves show, showed what they're capable of. They play well. Um, and the next one, KDB, hold or sell. We always have this with KDB because uh, people seem to get frustrated with him a little bit. Um, but he does the business. He does the business. Um, he ticks along very, very nicely. He's always one of the highest point scorers. He does cost a bomb. But he's someone who's quite explosive as well. He's capable of star man, a goal, assists. He, he he can do the lot. So, James, hold for me. Yeah, Dan, if you can afford him. Yeah, hold definitely. Yeah, 
Blackburn fixtures counting up now. I know they didn't play in the uh, FA Cup, but it will definitely play in the Carabao Cup, I would imagine, mm. with it being so deep now into the quarterfinals. And then you've got Europe coming up soon, so yeah, he's the main man. High scoring midfielder in the game. Definitely. Top drawer. Right, Martin Beasley. Last question. Um, I've pretty much covered it, but the best block defence to go with. So go from now. If you had a choice of a best block defence for the rest of January, that's where I'm going to take the question because I think we've touched on uh, February and, and the end of January. James, for the rest of January, what do you do? Uh, well, it's got to be City for those fixture volume, I think. Yeah. Ben? Yeah, City, but not far behind. United's got decent fixtures. I know they've got Man City and Arsenal, but then they've got Palace, Reading, and then a potential double game week, a double header of a semi final in the Carabao Cup. Yeah. So, yeah, plenty of fixtures for United. Same, same amount of City. Yeah, after that City Arsenal, United's fixtures <laughs> look quite nice. Obviously, depending on again the Carabao Cup, mm. if they uh, get past Charlton. Um, yeah. Yeah, best spot defence. Probably City. Double the opportunities to get clean sheets, haven't they? I mean, yeah. Got to play the volume. Got to play the volume. Right, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Drop a like. Get a comment in as well. And if you're listening on the audio, Spotify, Anchor, uh, can you please give us a good rating. It does help. Um, We're going to now get across to uh, to the Patreon Cup draw. Everyone's been waiting for this. We're 57 minutes into the pod. You, I mean, I've not been waiting for this because I'm not involved again. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? How did you get on, James? I had a shocker, basically. Um, first half of the season, most of my teams were did, doing quite poorly. I um, turned it around now, but too, unfortunately too late for the Patreon Cup. Yeah, yeah, I've scraped through as well. <laughs> I just got through. Out of 39 teams, because one of them was a bye, I, I scored the seventh highest amount of points. <laughs> In the, in, in the group stages. There were only six teams scored higher points than me. And I didn't get a single point. Crazy. At bo- bottom of my group stage with zero points. Absolutely unbelievable. And when I seen this this, this week, I thought, I think I got something like 116, I think. I thought, surely, who were I against? Who were I against? Surely not the 126. I just thought, I yeah, too well. <laughs> You're not up. bitter about it, though, are you, Tony? No, no. It's only two, <laughs> two, two years on spin, I've been absolutely shafted by the group draw. So, next year, I'm going to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, so, yeah, uh, well done to all you 16 teams that got through. Um, let's say 15 teams qualified. And uh, then there's one team that always scrapes through as the uh, best fourth place team and Ben that was you yeah you you got through on goal difference so happy days right current holder as well That's current holder so, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> defending you defending, defending your trophy champion. so we'll, we'll see how this the goes. blue ring blue corner is there anybody you don't want to face Ben nah bring them on ah that's what I like to hear <laughs> that's what I like to hear right so you'll each call out a number, um, and then I'll tell you who they are. I'll get them wrote down. We'll get the uh, get the eight games up and printed off. Get them into the Patreon league, uh, into the uh, into the Patreon section on the Discord, and let's get these uh, these fixtures played next game week. So, James, you can go first, mate. Pick a number. <clears throat> first number out the hat is. Number 21. 21. Matthew Woolley. Matt Woolley will play. Go on, Ben. Dig deep. 39. 39. Wayne Foster Crouch. Next up. Next up, James. 
Number 28. Number 28. That's our very own Ben Lee. Whoa. Number two. Number two. Scott McKee. Scott McKee and Ben Lee. Oh. It's got a rhyme. Next up, James. Number nine. Number nine. Flower Pot Man, Tom Brindley. And he will play. Ben? Number 17. Number 17. Stephen Broughton. Next up, James. Number 23. That's Tom Gledhill. Couple of Toms in the draw. And Number ben? six. Number six. Mark McKee. We're the best named uh, team in the league. For me, no. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, James. Number three. Number three, Kerry Jones. Will play. 22. 22. Aman Tatler. Had him on the show not long ago. He's absolutely flying. The richest man in Dream Tap Team. all that. That is a tough one. Go on, James, next up. Number 13. Number 13, David Dunkley. Number 37. And he will play Edward Morgan. Eddie's All Stars. Next up. Number 18. Number 18 is John Mellier. 25. And he will play Jeff McGow. JM versus JM. The JM Derby. (laughs) (laughs) Jose Mourinho. (laughs) And last up. Number 35. Number 35 is Dan Cox. And he will play... Number 12. Seth Osborne. There you are, Seth. You yourself a Dan Cox. And that concludes the draw for the last 16 of the Patreon Cup. Uh, thanks, everyone, for getting involved. I hope you enjoy it. Um, and just, just a note... No more changing your bastard team names. Because <laughs> <laughs> it threw a right curveball in. Um, yeah, I'm looking at you, Ash, and you, Seth. But yeah, all sorted now. Anyway. All good. That's that done. Right. Just the uh, the Cash Leagues and the Patreon League to read out. Dream Team Tonic Cash League. Um, James, do you want to give this a read out, mate? Yeah, so in in 10th spot, we've got Jake Bevan. In joint 8th, we've got Dan Bartlam and Seth Osborne. In 7th, we've got Leo Reed. 6th, Andy Allett. 5th, Tom Brinley. 4th, Lee Watson. 3rd, Stephen Williams. 2nd, Simon Davis. And at the top of the league, we have Anthony Sutcliffe. Get in. Back there, snook again. I see hey, you Simon. got it back to number one. Yeah, just, Ooh, it's just close in time. Though. Just in time. Been chatting to Simon. Uh, it's a very close run thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've just got myself back up in time just to read out because I was second for, for earlier in the week. So there you are. I'm back there just in time to read out on the uh, pod. Excellent. And the next up, the DT Tonic Patreon League. Ben, going to give this a read out, mate. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, in tenth place, Wayne Foster Crouch. Ninth place, Seb Ob- Seth Osborne. Uh, eighth place, Peter Franklin. Seventh place, Nicholas Stephen. Sixth place, Mark McKee. Fifth place, John Mellier. Fourth place, Stephen Broughton. Third place, Tom Brinley. Second place, Lee Uting. And top of the shot, Jake Bevan. Is that a new leader? Yeah, it is. 
and he went absolutely wow. flying. That, that, just touching on that sixty point buffer we run about, I'm mm. sure Luton had a massive buffer. He did last week. Yeah, that's massive. Mm. Uh, fair play, Jay Bevan. You've uh, climbed to the top. It's, it's kind of bunged up a little bit more, or the top four, top four or five there. Yeah. Do you think we should consider um, uh, disqualifying Seth Osborne for his team name? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read him out. I should have read him out. Oh, God. There's some cracking names there. Huang King <laughs> Off. Huang King Off. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I missed that one. Love it. Yeah. He must have changed his name as well for that as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's probably his cup team. <laughs> Send him back. names in there. I've got to read them. So you got Debbie does Dallas, <laughs> Wanking off, Hello you Conte, <laughs> Pikachu, Thomas Tuchel's lefty, <laughs> <laughs> up the Red Dogs. Uh, so yeah, another. For some reason there's two Hello you Conte in there with different different managers. Oh, there is, yeah. yeah. Oh. And, so you can't do that. If someone's got to ch- no, don't change it. Don't change your name. <laughs> and then the top one is Cucurella Deville. Cucurella. I think I'm supposed to read it Cucurella. Cucurella. That's quite cunning. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, excellent. Right. Well, that's it for the evening. Um, James, you can get yourself off to bed, mate. And uh, thanks, Tony. Recover I'll be straight like in there. Yeah, like a couple of pints of water, mate. Like your whoa, uh, whoa, 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 your liver arrest. Whoa, 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 whoa. I like it how you're not reading out the second chance league, seeing as though I'm second in that one. <laughs> oh, hold on. I didn't see the second. Uh, yeah, second Are you all right? You don't have to read it out this week. It's only just started. Oh, it's, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Are you second and eighth? Get in. Yeah. yeah, it's all a bit coarse at the minute. We'll, we'll, we'll give that a yeah. few weeks. We'll give that a few weeks. And then we'll a read it few out. Weeks. Don't worry, Ben. You'll be up there. I'm pretty sure you could be creeping onto uh, onto cash league one so shortly. Anyway, like you say, you have the Morris's that just stays behind and comes up towards the end. So I'm sure we'll be seeing you. Anyway, uh, quick, quickly, on, on uh, what was our differentials for this month? The differentials. We we'll quickly get them up here. Um, where are we? Here? Right. So we've gone. Is that the right one? Yeah, that's the right one. So, James has gone for Mares. Yes, oh. finally got some points on the board. Oh, but it starts from the 9th of January. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. no, 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 cracking oh, choice. Well, I see cracking choice. Game now, really. <laughs> Crack, cracking choice, James. Yeah, oh, so James has gone for Mares. He's got himself a nice 18 point head start. Um, <laughs> Fergie went for a Kanji. Um, and then the community went for. So we refresh Fernandez. 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 And we find out he's not on penalties. Um, and he's suspended for the next match. Yeah, yeah, he is. Minus one this week. I went for Alvarez. <laughs> So I've got myself a goal tonight. I don't know how many games he's going to start, but I think with the fixture volume, he might do a little bit. So, And uh, Ben, you went for Nathan Aki, <laughs> which obviously tonight is a bit of a missed opportunity, but uh, going forward. So you're, yeah. you're saying that Fernandez is on minus points at the moment, yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah. So la- last month, the community picked Dallo, and he ended up on minus four because he got a red card. <laughs> So they go. We'll have to have a chat with the uh, with the with the community manager about his uh, about his choices. I think um, yeah. it's going it's going backwards. Yeah, come on, <laughs> come on, you need to sort it out, mate. It's uh, it's not happening. You need to stop these United players being on your list. I think <laughs> by the looks of it. But yeah, there's the differential league. Um, yeah, we'll have an update next week. And we'll, we'll get the league table on there. Um, the Patreon Cup is going to be from game week 18, uh, the last 16, the, la- the last 16 round will be. So good luck to everyone involved. 
uh, as Ben tries to retain his trophy. <laughs> um, best of luck to everyone in the week coming. And we will speak to you next weekend. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Good night, chaps.